The past stock market leaders are finally rolling over. Google's down 25%, Amazon's down 34%, Facebook's down 48%, and Netflix is down 73% from its all-time highs. Other mega cap names like Tesla and Nvidia are down 30% and 46% respectively. Growth stocks were the first to crash in February of 2021, when ARK was trading at $159.70. It now trades for just $47, nearly a 70% decline. All of 2021, we had a stealth bear market where the number of stocks participating in the index rallies kept shrinking. Now it's 2022 and the QQQs are down 23% and SPY is down 14%. But unfortunately, it looks like this bear market is just starting. Welcome back to Stock Tricks with Nick. In today's video, we'll be walking through a timeline that led to the market peak along with dissecting the chart of the FANG stocks to see just how far we have left to drop. Before we get too into the weeds, all the charts that we're going to be going over are provided by MarketSmith, which is a trading research platform that I use every single day. If you want to give MarketSmith a try, there's a link in the description below, and if you have any questions about the platform, reach out. All right, the first chart that we want to go over is the daily chart of the QQQs, and we want to focus in on February of 2021 when we actually peaked, uh, all the growth stocks peaked and started their uh, own stealth bear market while the index is chopped higher here. So focusing in, you can see we were trading above the 8-day, the 21, the 50-day, and the 200-day moving average. Nice strong uptrend. These uptrends are where you make the easy money, um, but they don't always last. And eventually we did see kind of a tipping point here. We broke under the 8-day um, on the 17th, pulled back under the 21, under the 50-day, and we started to build our own base in the QQQs here. And this base really went from February up until... Um, Late in June here, you see first pullback. We did make a new high, but really uh, the second pullback, consolidation, and then push out here led a nice strong uptrend from really June, July up to September where we had another pullback uh, before our final ascent up here. Uh, we had a really nice trading period in uh, uh, middle part of October to November after this correction ended. Uh, one of my best trading periods of 2021 was right through this area. And then eventually we actually peaked on this outside um, bearish engulfing candle on November 22nd here, where we peaked at 408.71. You see, we tried to push higher. We were extended from all the key moving averages. And eventually we closed lower that day, bearish engulfing, like I mentioned, on heavier than average volume. You could see the 50-day average volume line, this red line here. And on that day, massive volume, or right here, on this day, uh, we saw the first of two massive volume days of distribution. So this was a distribution day. Second day was a distribution day, um, more volume, and we pulled back, let's see, 1.8% from the previous day there. At this point, we were already extended, and we wanted to start taking risk off the table. You did see some chop before testing the 50-day, another kind of bounce, pulling back, undercutting the 50-day, and we really started to like make our final top here. Now we did top in price on this day, but this was the last bit of action before we broke under the 50 day moving average, had that sharp decline um, up until January. We had a mini reversal to the 200 day moving average, uh, pulled back, tested the 200 day again, couldn't get two daily closes over the 200 day, another flush down into the 318 area. Uh, and then a really nice reversal. This was the day that uh, Russia you, uh, invaded Ukraine. All the bad news was kind of baked into the market. So after we got a quick move lower that day, everything reversed uh, just because we were so far extended from the key moving averages on the downside and all the bad news had been baked in. We did get a nice relief rally for a couple of days before retesting those lows and then getting that really strong move up on a couple of heavier average uh, volume days up to that 200 day moving average and once again we had one close over the 200 day but we could not handle that area we tested it similar you could just take a screenshot of this and just copy paste it over here because we have that one close above we pull back test it on the upside and that was really the last uh, last day that we had some strong action there we eventually broke broke under the 50 day moving average with a gap down um, that was not closed, correct? Yes, not closed. And then um, eventually failing at the 50 day. And you can see where we're at right now, putting in a new low on Friday, closing at, let's see, 313.25. 
and that does not look good on the daily chart. We are a little bit extended from the key moving averages now. Maybe we get another day or two on the downside before a mini reversal test the moving averages that are coming down. Uh, so we're not gonna go straight down here, just like stocks don't go straight up, but the trend is down. We're under all the key moving averages and we're seeing heavy volume days on down days versus up days. The next chart I wanna look at is GMIAB on MarketSmith. Now this shows the advanced decline line of the NASDAQ and you can see really well here. So this middle part, you have the NASDAQ and then the lower blue solid line is the advanced decline. So how many stocks are participating in the rally? And this goes back into how much probability are you getting in your trade? Because if only one or two stocks are starting to move up, say uh, Tesla and Nvidia in 2021, they, those were uh, Tesla, Nvidia and Apple were the few stocks that were really rallying. Unless you're in those names, you're not gonna be trading well. So if we think about this in a probabilistic manner, we wanna add as much probability on our side before taking trades. So if only a few names are participating in these rallies as the indexes move higher, well, it doesn't matter what the indexes are doing if we're not making money. We're here trading so we can make money. So going back here, I uh, wanna look at February, 2021. We had that market top uh, along with the advanced decline line. We had a pullback here and then we really just chopped sideways until we started declining with higher or lower highs, higher lows, while the index was actually making higher highs than higher lows, higher highs, that was actually an undercut of the low. Um, but you could see while the indexes was chopping higher, the advanced decline, advanced decline line was chopping lower, meaning the number of stocks participating in the rally was declining, our probabilities of trading profitably were declining all throughout 2021. So that's why you saw kind of a stealth bear market in 2021 while the indexes were continuing to push higher. So if 2021 was a tough swing trading year for you, look at this chart and understand this is part of why that is. The, the market participation just was not there. Now let's switch over to some of the FANG stocks. First I wanted to cover is Google. Um, this had been basically range bound between 2,500 and 3,000 for a while now. Last day we tested that, low was um, July of 2021. And then we started putting in higher highs, higher lows, higher highs, higher lows, but really no push um, past 3000 here uh, since November. Again, we had a really nice trading period, middle of October to middle of November. But after that point, we were putting in lower highs, lower highs. And eventually we did get this gap up on good earnings. I was actually in the trade um, after earnings came out, tried to trade this on the upside, immediately got stopped out and have not traded Google since. Um, the fact that it could not hold that nice gap up on earnings on massive volume was a warning sign that we might be in for a little bit more of a correction. Now, I didn't know that this was gonna um, completely flush under its 2,500 support here, but it was enough information to tell me to get out. You can always buy a stock back, but you can't, uh, you can't limit your downside risk if you're still in a stock. So I got out of it. Um, it flushed lower to 2,500 right here. Tested that one, two, three, four times. And then eventually we built a little shelf under and then broke under um, on April 22nd. And then we had poor response to earnings, minus 3.6% on that day, um, down to 2,250, 2,260. And we have not made a new low on Friday while the NASDAQ made a new low. So that is a, a good, small, small sign of relative strength. But uh, we're a bit extended on the downside here. Uh, on Friday, we're 4.5% from the 8-day EMA, 95 from the 21, and 135 from the 50-day moving average. So I wouldn't be surprised if we do get a maybe one step lower, maybe we gap down on Monday, then get a mini rally up to the 8-day. But all of these moving averages are now in a downtrend. You're under the 200-day moving average, or the 200-day moving average is in a downtrend. If we go to a weekly chart on this, this is not what Google does as a strong stock. It doesn't make these bases and then failing at the bases. Every time Google has made a base, it has broken to the upside, made a base, broken to the upside, made a base, broken to the upside. This is a high probability trading environment where we see nice, clean uptrends. Now when you see volatility increase, when you see a base break to the downside, going back to the daily chart, 
we are likely in for more pain. If we're doing a measured move from 3,000 to 2,500, that was the range bound base. Um, the next kind of area of support would be another 500 down to 2,000. And you do see this nice area of a previous base of consolidation there. So good support at 2,000. That's where I'm looking for Google to head. Again, not immediately. Stocks don't go straight up or straight down. We'll likely see an oversold bounce before we eventually get there, but that's the area that I'm really looking for with Google. Next, let's go over a daily chart of Amazon. On Friday, or I guess Thursday night, they reported earnings. Friday, they were down 14% on absolutely massive, massive volume. Uh, what was that volume run rate? 282% on that day, closing in the lower 20, or closing at 30% of the daily range. Uh, definitely not good there. And going to a weekly chart, this is really, really where you see Amazon has been consolidating for a very long time. Um, even on a monthly chart, probably even cleaner. You could see it's probably a little small here, but for months, this has been trading sideways. And something that Amazon has never done after a consolidation like this has been broken, breaking to the downside. Uh, when it IPO'd in the tech bubble, that broke to the downside. But you don't see consolidations that don't resolve itself to the upside. Um, until you get into major bear markets like 2000, like 2008 here. So with this in mind, we've consolidated for months here. We've tried to hold this, these prices higher and now we're breaking to the downside on heavy volume, on disappointing earnings. Think back to Mark Minervini, US investing champion of 2021. He's got the 50-80 rule, meaning 50% of stocks will decline 80% or yeah, 50% of stocks will decline 80% from their highs after they make a final peak and 80% of stocks will decline 50%. Now, whether Amazon's in the 80% that will only go down 50% or in the 50% that's gonna decline 80%, um, it's too early to tell. But these previous market leaders are not the stocks that typically lead in the next bull market. So we've seen a, an amazing run out of Amazon. It's likely not going to be a top stock to focus on going forward. I wanna really quickly cover Netflix just because it was another example of just how bad things can get for previous market leaders. Um, this had been shopping sideways in a base for uh, weeks, for months, resolved itself to the upside for a short period of time. This was in um, kind of September to November when we had that really nice trading period. And then eventually we break under the 10 week moving average on um, right at the 50 or right on um, heavier volume. We consolidate a little bit, another flush lower, consolidate another flush lower, and now we're 72.8% off the 52 week highs. So previous leaders can make absolute, um, absolute moves to the downside, 73%. When you just buy the dip, that is not a working strategy in a bear market. What you need to be doing is sitting on the sidelines in cash, waiting for the, the markets to be in an uptrend, for new leadership to be forming, and to get traction on some test trades. So when you put on new trades, very small position sizes, um, and only start sizing up when you get traction uh, with your trades. With Netflix, down 73% from its highs, people said that the, would, that would never happen, but if we go back to the 50-80 rule, we knew there was a probability that it would. And the last stock that I wanna cover in today's video is Facebook. It peaked at 384, and then it did break under the 50-day moving average on higher than average volume on, let's see, September, September 20th here. When stocks break under that 50-day moving average on higher than average volume, that's typically institutions liquidating their positions. It's not a time to buy the dip. It's a time to take risk off, start, start taking your profit from this trade because it's showing that institutions are not favoring this setup. You can always buy back, but you can only protect yourself by sitting on the sidelines. After that move, we did eventually break back over the 50-day moving average, uh, but quickly resolved itself to the downside. A little bit more chop until we get this gap down on earnings. Massive gap down, down 26% on 672% volume run rate, and immediately move from there all the way down to 185 uh, while the market pressure lifted, Facebook also had a nice rally up to the 50-day moving average, but now it's under, under a declining 200-day moving average. That adds a bunch of probability against you when you're under a declining 
uh, 200-day moving average and just testing a declining 50-day moving average. The final takeaways from this video, market leaders in previous bull runs don't tend to be the leaders in the next bull run. Can they rally and get back to previous highs? Sure, but as traders, we want to be buying the strongest stocks in the strongest groups while the market's in an uptrend. So the great gains that we've gotten from the FANG stocks were awesome, but are not expected to continue. Next is the 50-80 rule. In bear markets, 80% of stocks will decline 50% from their highs, and 50% of stocks will decline 80% from their highs. Keep that in mind when you try to buy the dip. And finally, you do not have to trade every day. This market is screaming low probability trading environment. We're under all the key moving averages. We've just made a new low on the NASDAQ. Old leaders are rolling over. What you should be doing here is go back, study your previous trades, study previous charts, study previous markets, and build mental capital for the next bull run. If you guys enjoyed this video, please smash the like button and subscribe to my channel. I make trading videos like this along with trade breakdowns and trade watch lists. Have a great weekend. I'll see you guys in the next video.